So with a market size of $11.3 billion and 2.6 million unique digital wallets, NFTs are, is becoming one of the fastest technology industries. It's not surprising that even the government is getting into this, with the UK government recently announcing talks of potentially minting its own NFTs. Now, I have the impossible job of talking about NFT security in 12 minutes, and I know it's not the most fun subject, but it's the most important in my opinion. Now, NFTs, when people think about it, they think about apes, monkeys, or even the avatar, just like in the screen. However, it's so much more than that. So an NFT is a non-fungible token, which means it's a unique cryptography token that exists on a blockchain and cannot be replicated. Now, crypto is fungible, which means cryptocurrency can trade a currency for a currency. But you can't trade a house for a house because each house is unique, um, has different locations, and similar to that, NFTs, each of it is unique and has its own properties. Now, when I talk about NFTs and marketplace, I often use one of my favorite places, which is Balogun Market in Nigeria. Now, within this market, buyers are able to haggle prices and set contracts of what the terms of agreement are. Similar to that, you have that within the NFT space. So you have smart contracts, which are agreements that have been codified inside a blockchain. And it supports NFT transactions, which allows you the owner to be able to set the transfer of ownership from seller to buyer. At the basic level, NFT or smart contracts act as an implement of a sale agreement. It allows creators to be able to set collection level fee within their NFTs or their mint, which means that every sale that they make, they're able to make royalties from it. Now, a blockchain is a decentralized public ledger of transactions distributed across a network. Now, decentralization in blockchain enables markets um, and enables creators and investors to work with one another rather than a third party. So a great example is a musician might need the help of YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Music to be able to promote the music. But with NFTs, they're able to remove the third party and connect directly to the audience, meaning they're able to have higher revenue. Now, a good example of talking about what does this look like in reality is, on the screen, we have Bode. So, Bode is a visual artist in Nigeria. Previously, Bode did murals or paintings, and what happened is with the paintings, if he sells one paint, that's it, he doesn't make any money from it. He gets his money and that's it. But with an NFT, and if he's able to code 5% royalties, it means every time his NFT gets sold, he's able to make 5% of that transaction. Now, because of that, it allows fair trade with an artist where they're able to commodify their work and earn more. Now, with the earning potential of NFTs and living in a country like Nigeria and looking at the currency exchange between ETH and Naira, it's no coincidence that Buddy is going to leave his traditional art and focus more on NFTs. Now, NFT is still not a utopia. You know, I've talked about the benefits and the opportunities of artists actually using this as a way of making more money, but there are risks involved. The NFT industry is still young, which means a lot of people don't really know what NFTs are. And because of that, there is an asymmetric information. Now, a lot of people getting into the NFT space are artists who don't have cryptography background or cybersecurity background. And because of this, they are being exploited based on lack of knowledge. Now, criminals need two critical information to be able to scam you. And that is your private key and your seed phrase, which acts as your password. So how they're able to do this is through trust. Again, a new person coming into the industry don't, doesn't know what they're you know, doing. Somebody might come and say, actually, you know, I'll help you onboard you know, with the onboarding process. And because of that, they're able to maybe get their seed phrase or private keys. Another thing is fake NFT giveaways. So sometimes companies promote um, themselves by giving free NFT giveaways or sometimes even cryptocurrency. Now, if you're from a developing country and you don't have capital, this would be a great way for you to get into the industry or even learn more about it. But it could be a phishing link. Another thing is fake jobs, links, um, also different things like rug and pull scam. So for example, somebody might come and say, I have an environmental idea. If you buy my NFT 
I'll be able to plant a tree somewhere or they might give you grand ideas of things that they were able to do by you buying the NFT. However, within a rug and pull scam is as investors rush in, the person disappears once the transaction is pulled through. So that's called a rug and pull. Another thing is investor scams where some companies lie that they're affiliated to bigger franchise, franchises to be able to get people to trust their brand. And then once the transaction goes through, they disappear. Now, I've talked about smart contracts. And like any code, if you don't comb through it to make sure there's no security um, exploitation within the code, hackers are going to take advantage of that. So that's another element of vulnerabilities within NFTs. And a way that could be tackled is through a smart contract audit, where you actually audit your code to make sure that it doesn't have any security vulnerability. The third one is marketplace risk. Now, I talked about you know, the NFT space being decentralized, but marketplaces are actually a centralized space within a decentralized network. What does this mean? It means that marketplaces have you know, public keys of different creators on their platform. So as a cyber criminal, why should I go through all that stress to hack one person when I can hack marketplaces and get a lot of public keys? That's more financiable for me. And because of that, we're seeing a huge increase of different marketplaces being hacked. Another issue is plagiarized NFTs. Somebody can copy somebody's artwork and sell it on OpenSea. And the issue with that is the investor may not know that this NFT actually doesn't belong to the creator. And because of that, they lose money because it's not the original artwork. So it's not worth anything. So these are the vulnerabilities that tend to be within the NFT space. Smart contracts, social engineering, and marketplace vulnerabilities. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. There are ways in which you can actually improve your security within the NFT space. The first one is a no-brainer, which is to keep your public, your private key private. So make sure you don't share it with anyone. And it could be even as simple as you trying to explain to somebody how they can onboard to the system and you're screen sharing your wallet, which allows them to be able to get some information. Second thing is to use strong password or two-factor authentication. You can use facial recognition or fingerprints identity that makes identity theft more difficult. Now, the use of NFT hardware wallets provided by official manufacturers actually helps. So in the NFT space, there's two things, cold wallets and hot wallet. So a hot wallet would be your online wallet, MetaMask, while a, hard, um, a cold wallet would be your hardware. So if you're able to put your NFT details in your hardware wallet, it means it's not connected to the internet and has less risk. Now, I talked about the different social engineering and it's more important for everyone to research, 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 even with the things I'm talking about today. Do your research. Make sure you're able to verify the smart contract, the seller's identity, and the history before investing. Because you might invest an idea because you're seeing loads of people investing and get scammed. So make sure you do your due diligence as in any field within NFT. Finally, use a VPN. So a virtual private network, which allows you to encrypt and anonymize your NFT traffic. Now, in my opinion, I think the future of NFT security lies in two different things. The first one is AI and machine learning. So a few companies are actually merging within the space that specializes in fraud detection, using image detection, as well as transaction monitoring. And I see that, similar to in cybersecurity, how you have a lot of cyber threat intelligence innovation, I can only see that trickle down within the NFT space. The second thing that I see as the future of security is education. One of the main things within NFT is that a lot of people don't know about NFTs or don't even know about security. And more importantly, what a good security hygiene looks like. There needs to be a centralized space where people are learning about security, can be certified in security, like we have in cybersecurity. For example, you know, there are certifications like Compte Security Plus if you want to get into the cybersecurity industry, or even BCS, they have business continuity. There are different certifications for that, but we don't have that in the NFT security space. And that's where my passion comes in, is ensuring that as people are coming into the space, there is enough NFT security experts to be able to meet the demands 
of the cyber threats that are faced by NFT creators and investors each day. And I also see a future of an increase in job demands within NFT security. As more people are getting scammed, we need more security experts. Now I get the question, which is, what is the, who is in charge of NFT security? Who is responsible for it? And I think the answer is everybody. Individuals need to increase their security hygiene to make sure that they're doing the right thing when interacting within the space. Marketplaces and platforms need to ensure that their platform is safe to use and well protected. And also the government needs to actually do something. For example, there is no legal definition of NFT right now within the UK law. If you can't define something, how are you gonna protect it? And because of that, I believe that we all can come together to ensure that the NFT is a more secure place by working together and by everybody doing their part. Thank you.